MMAX Power Gamer here and say, you look like a fine fella who wants to have fun. Are you in the mood for some excitement? Looking for a game that will delay you while simultaneously kicking in the keister? Well, you're in luck because today we're taking a look at the interactive electronic application known as Cuphead. Cuphead, the little indie game that could. This ambitious little title was a huge process that went through a lot of hardships, but if our country knows anything, it's that those who struggle will come out on top. So it's time to see what this little passion project went through. The game was developed by the fine fellas at Studio MDHR, a Canadian independent developer studio founded by Chad and Jared Moldenhauer. They wanted to make a game that took heavy inspiration from the classic moving drawings of the 1930s. They attempted this all the way back in the year 2000, but lacked the tools necessary to do so. Since this was the studio's first game, it took a lot of work and time to make. The two brothers supposedly quit their jobs and remorked mortgage their houses to make this game a reality. But that hard work more than paid off as upon its release on September 29th, 2017, it took off, selling over 1 million copies in its first week and receiving more praise than they knew what to do with. It was beloved by many, won loads of awards, and even managed to receive one of them fancy dancy talking picture shows on the Netflix. Now that's a story we can all be inspired by. I played this game myself and I absolutely loved it. So come with me and see what makes this game such a dappin' handy. Brace yourselves, everyone, because we're about to dive right into this plot. In the magical land of the Inkwell Isles, Cuphead and his brother Mugman are two mischievous little fellas under the watchful eye of the wise Elder Kettle. These two boys just have a knack for getting into trouble, though, and they wind up in the forbidden fortress of fear known as the Devil's Casino. They go on a winning streak, but all fun and games come to a stop when they come face to face with the dark, dirty, dastardly Devil! He promises them a bet where they can win untold riches or lose their souls, and Cuphead gets too carried away. Oh no, they've lost! The two young boys beg the casino owner for forgiveness, and he promises them they can be saved if they collect the other souls he needs before throwing them out into the wild. The two boys scatter off to their wonderful elder, and he gives them a magical potion. Now these two beverage boys can shoot energy out of their fingers. They set off to collect the souls, but they better be careful because those soul owners are going to be putting up a fight. Now that's what I call a game story, my fruitful friends. The stakes are made clear and it gets straight to the point. Only you can help the poor boys save their souls from the Prince of Darkness himself. Now, I'm sure you've all noticed this game's astonishing presentation. These developers poured their blood, sweat, and tears into this game, and probably a few other liquids. And my god, the hard work paid off. This is one of the finest looking pieces of interactive entertainment I've ever laid my eyes on. This animation is perfect, the backgrounds look wonderful, and every one of these characters are designed with such class and expertise you're sure to fall in love with them. And didn't somebody call for some chipper and classy music? Well, you're in luck, because these are some toe tapping tunes that can bring a smile to anyone's face. You're never fully dressed without one, you know. But I'm sure you're wondering how this game plays. Well, my curious friends, it's a run-and-gun platformer where you want to shoot down everything. You can run, shoot, jump, and dash. However, since your goal is to collect the sweet souls of the sinners, this game is 70% boss fights. Shoot them down while avoiding their attacks, but this ain't no walk in the park. These fearsome foes want to hold on to their souls as much as possible, and who can blame them? I know I wouldn't want to hand over my soul to Mr. Satan, but if you take him down, you get the contract that states you're the rightful owner of their soul. You got three nice health points right there, and you lose one with any hit. This means all attacks do the same amount of damage, but you're gonna need to master your dodging skills, because once you lose one, it's gone for good until you start the fight over. Enemies send loads of attacks your way, and if you're not careful, you'll be singing hallelujah before you know it. This game is all about the three Ps, precision, patience, and persistence. These bosses have a set number of attacks, and you need to memorize them. Don't get too comfortable, though, because they're random when they happen. It's up to you to spot which one is coming, and know how to avoid it while still dishing out the pain. There is no health bar on these marvelous menacing monstrosities. You only know how far you got when you finally bite the dust. Each boss has multiple phases, and you know you're in another one when they miraculously morph, dishing out brand new attacks that you have to figure out. And when you finally vanquish your foe, you get one of the most sweet, soul-fillingly satisfying screens in video game history. <laughs> This screen alone makes me want to destroy everything, and it should do the same with you. You don't want to let your country down, do you? But that's just the boss fights. There's six running gun levels you have to get through as well. Enemies come from all over the place, and each one has a mini boss you have to destroy. Or not! It's actually possible to beat every running gun level without firing a single shot. But I'm not doing that because I value my sanity. These levels really put your platforming skills to the test. You'll have swarming enemies on disappearing platforms, and moments where you have to parry, dash, and parry again. Now, what's a parry, you might ask? Well, whenever you see one of these pretty pink objects, if you jump on it and hit the jump button again right as you land on it, you can destroy it, not only letting you bypass 
class a complete leap and also giving you a small jump boost. The run and gun levels also have coins you can collect and spend in the shop run by this plus size pig named Porkrine. Here you can buy new types of attacks and special charms to power yourself up. You can also find some coins in the overworld, but the number is limited so you better spend wisely. In between fights you can equip yourself with the goodies you purchase. You can equip two different types of shots and one charm. You can switch between shots at will and they each have different strengths and weaknesses. You've got your standard pea shooter, the strong but short range spread, the boomerang style roundabout, the weaker homing shot chaser, the slower but stronger and bouncy lobber, and the extremely powerful charge. The more damage you do to enemies, the more you fill up these five cards, which act as your super meter. Once they fill up, you can unleash a stupendous super move that changes depending on what weapon you have equipped. Pea shooter shoots a laser blast, spread fire spikes in all eight directions, roundabout launches a giant moving blast, chaser gives you a small orbiting shield that knocks out smaller enemies, lobber does a big lob, and charge creates a large burst of energy. You've also got those six charms you can equip. Smoke bomb, which makes you invincible while dashing. Heart, which lowers your attack power, but gives you an extra one of those lovely health points. Sugar, which gives you an automatic parry. Whetstone, which gives you an axe attack, effectively letting you parry almost anything. Coffee, which slowly refills that handy dandy super meter at all times. And twin hearts, which is like the heart, only doubled. And let me tell you, smoke bomb is the one I certainly got the most use out of. It saved my tukas on more occasions than I can count on my hands. Thanks to the different shots and charms you can equip, these two chalice children can stand up to anything in their path, as long as you have the skills necessary to deal with them. But there's one more type of level I haven't mentioned yet. The three mausoleum levels. These levels place you in a spooky, scary sanctuary where you have to parry these pesky pink poltergeists before they reach this face. You can't let a single one touch it or it's your doom. But if you knock them all out, you release the spirit of the legendary chalice, and she bestows upon you an ultimate attack. There's three of these beautiful barrages, and you can only use them when you charge up all five of your gods. A super laser, temporary invincibility, and a fully controllable ghost that damages enemies with a single touch. But not all of the boss fights are run and gun. A handful of them have you take to the skies in one of these fancy dancy flying machines. You move all over the place and fire bullets at the enemy while they throw a dangerous defilement of attacks at you. You can't dash in these, but you can still parry like a fine soldier in our glorious air force. And you can shrink down, which limits your range, but makes you move faster. Your charms still work here, and without the dash and jump, only half of them make a difference, but us good folk don't care about that. The super moves come in the form of shooting these giant missiles, and the ultimate attack you transform into a big bang bomb that blows the enemy into next Tuesday. And with all the shooting you do, you'll fill up that super meter in no time. And later on, you can switch from bullets to bombs, which have less range, but do more damage. When you finish off one of these loathsome low lives, you're given a ranking based on how well you did. You want to score a high rank? Well, you're gonna need to bring your S game to this here shindig. You'll have to beat them in about two minutes, do three perfect parries, six supreme super moves, and not get hit a single time. Go ahead and try it if you feel the need to prove yourself, but to me that sounds about as fun as taking a leisurely stroll off a bridge. This is one of the hardest games I've ever played in my lovely little life. You're gonna go through hell and back and back to hell if you want to beat this bad boy. Trial and error is the name of the game if the name wasn't already cut bad. But no matter how hard these fights are, the game knows how to keep you coming back for more. It feels fair through and through, and you're gonna be hooked until those bosses bite the dust. But I've gone this far without mentioning one of the game's defining elements, co-op. At any point, another player can hop in and assist you on your adventure. But since you have two players attacking at once, that should make the game easier, right? <laughs> Wrong! The amount of damage you do is reduced, so together you do the same damage as one person playing alone. The only true advantage co-op has is if you parry your incorporeal companion, they're revived with one extra health point. But you gotta get them before they leave the screen, and it gets faster with every death. This game may be brutal, but let me tell you, there are few things in this world as satisfying as laying the smack down on these outrageous antagonists. Up first, you got the root pack. This group of vicious vegetables consists of a spitting potato, a crying onion, and a psychic carrot. The easiest boss in the game, which makes sense given that it's the first. Now, onto our first run and gun level, Forest Follies. A fearsome forest that serves as a swell introduction to these sorts of environments. Goopy Legrand is a bouncing blue blob who would rather attack from beyond the grave than meet with the devil, and it's not hard to see why. Ribby and Croaks are two frog, box, and brothers who can shoot fire and even turn into a slot machine. I'm surprised these two fellas don't work for the casino. Hilda is a bloated blimp and our first flying stage. She floats and flies all around while sending her cloudy minions at you. And they say laughter is contagious, but hers is quite dangerous. And in the end, she turns into a menacing moon, complete with her own UFOs. Good luck sleeping tonight, little Timmy. Treetop Trouble, another run and gun where you go through these trees, and the loving, innocent forest critters simply want you dead. Probably because you just broke into their home, you monster. Cagney Carnation is a dancing flower who shoots seething seeds at you, and eventually goes overgrown. I'm starting to think plant preservation is a bad idea. Now we move on to the second part of the Inkwell Isles, and we're greeted by Baroness Von Bonbon, a sugary sovereign who sends her loyal subjects to destroy you, an erupting gumball machine, a chomping jawbreaker, a crazy candy corn, a winged 
waffle, and a bouncing cupcake. Eventually, she just sicks her whole castle at you. That's a new one. Fun fair fever. You go through a carnival where everything is after you. I haven't seen condiments that cause this much pain since my school cafeteria. Tajimi the Great, you face off against this genie who seems to only grant the wishes of your hospital wanting to charge you. This is why you don't go messing with genies, little ones. Peppy the Clown, the only clown more dangerous than Mr. Gacy. He inflates himself like a balloon and even turns into a full merry-go-round. He also summons the third worst roller coaster I've ever seen. Wally Warbles is a feathered freak who spits out eggs, sheds his feathers, and even sicks his own son at you. This is one bird I certainly love to serve at Thanksgiving. Funhouse Frazzle is filled with these anti-gravity switches so you get all topsy-turvy. It's kind of disorienting and makes you question the fun in Funhouse. Grim Matchstick is one of the fiercest foes you'll face in the entire game. His fire breath can turn you into a summer barbecue within seconds, and the weather calls for Cloudy with a chance of pain. Worst is the last phase where his shots turn into these four-way blasts if you shoot them. This fight gave me quite the trouble, but it made it all the more satisfying when I slayed the mighty monster. Now we move on to the third and final aisle where we meet Rumor Honeybottoms. This queen bee sends her servants and spells at you before turning into a fist-shooting buzzsaw plane. And it's about as aggravating as a bee sting, because the platforms you jump on are random, and you can be caught in some inescapable predicaments. Rugged Ridge has you run along this cliffside while taking out the miners, and it ends with you running away from a terrible troll. Werner Vermin is a German rat scientist who attacks you with ordinary household objects, until he sicks a giant robot cat on you. Dr. Call's robot is outfitted with some heavy weaponry, and ends with a bullet hell gem blast. Captain Brinybeard is a ship's captain who sends some sea life at you, and even brings his boat to life. That's some mighty fine craftsmanship. Perilous Piers is the final run and gun, and it sure feels like it. This level has you run along the seaport and requires some very tricky maneuvers. But if I can do it, then so can you. Calla Maria is a monstrous mermaid who sends armies of fish and the souls of pirates at you before going full on Medusa. It's a real tough tumble, but I'm sure it'll all go swimmingly. And I, for one, love how detailed the water waves are. Sally Stage Play is a theater actress who attacks you while still entertaining the audience. The show must go on, after all. And I love how you get to see the play's actual story take place as you progress through the fight. The Phantom Express is a haunted train where you fight an eyeball ghost, a giant skeleton, two lollipop things, and finally the engine itself. This is one of the longest fights in the game, and you better be prepared or you'll be riding the train straight to hell. That's our final soul, and now we can return to the casino where we learn that the manager, King Dice, also made a deal with the devil. You think he know better. So, we have to collect his soul now as well, and you know this fight means business when it doesn't let you select simple mode, but that doesn't really matter since you could never progress on simple mode anyway. This fight is structured like a boss rush where you have to parry this spinning die to move this space along the board. The number you land on determines which of King Dice's gambling goons you have to face. There's three alcohol bottles, a set of poker chips, a fire spinning cigar, a two-faced domino, a rabbit magician, a a skeletal horse jockey, a roulette ballerina, a psychotic eight ball, and a simple clashing monkey. You want to time it right so you land on either the safe spaces or the fights that restore one heart, and make sure you don't land on the start over space. You're gonna want as many hearts as possible because in the end, King Dice launches a wave of cards at you and you have to parry the pink ones. It's super hard to avoid, unless this glitch happens where no cards come out, allowing you to take him out with ease. Eh, I beat him before. I don't feel bad about it. Now it's time to confront the devil himself. You can either hand over the soul contracts or you can refuse. If you give them to him, he turns you into his minions, and the game ends there. This causes the title screen music to play in reverse. Well, Cuphead and his pal Bug Man, they like to roll the dice. Snap it against the wolf as dog. But if you refuse, he finally decides to do what he probably should have done from the beginning. He distorts his fearsome form by stretching his neck, arms, and turning his head into a spider. He also shoots flames at you and sends his imp minions to attack. After that, he rips out of his own body and you go deeper into the pits. Fire away with everything you've got while avoiding his traps, and you'll finally show this nauseating nightmare who's boss. <laughs> Cuphead and Mugman destroy the soul contracts and are hailed as heroes as the game concludes. This unlocks expert mode, but I'm gonna pass. <laughs> Give it a go if you're up to the challenge, but for now, I must be on my merry way.